Welcome back to another installment of Lemonade with a Plum, where we meet with leaders and find out what do they do when they're handed lemons. My guest today is a good friend and colleague, Diane Caffarata. Welcome, Diane. Thank you. Yes, so you, you're a partner at Emmanuel, um, at Quinn Emanuel, which is the world's largest all business litigation firm. Congratulations. Thank you. That's right. And, yeah. And I understand that, that you were also just named the most feared law firm in the world. Yes, that was an accolade we received this year. Very proud of it. An, an accolade or a designation, but it's better <laughs> to be feared than to be loved, right? That was, was Machiavelli who said that? Well, when you're litigators and you're feared, it's probably, you know, I, I think it's an accolade. People know that you're serious and if you appear on you know, one side of the case, uh, whoever you're representing has serious litigation counsel. And so we look at it as a, as a plus. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and you don't have to be mean to be feared. You can be um, just incredibly confident. It's like, oh, I don't want to go up against the expert. So. Exactly. Yeah. Lots of lawyers are mean. We're not the meanest counsel. So we're, yeah. you know, That's we're smart. Right. We're savvy. We're, yeah. It's <laughs> a little bit different. <laughs> Exactly. Feared, but not, not meanest. Yes. Okay. That, <laughs> that's awesome. And um, thank you. So I see in your background, you have your bu business litigation mystified book that you just wrote. Um, I have my copy that I read through as well. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this is a great book. And for 20 bucks, you can understand what you need to know about the law. Um, it doesn't replace you need to, to have a lawyer, um, but it, it helps you prepare to hire the right lawyer or to find out alternatives and to know what to do without having to hire someone at 500, 1,000 or $1,500 an hour. Right, right, that's, that's kind of the idea is to uh, allow the reader a certain amount of background in litigation so that they can select better litigation counsel. They understand what they should be looking for. A lot of people don't really even know what they're looking for because, you know, thankfully they're not in litigation all the time and then it, right. it hits them, they're sued and they don't really know how to go about that. Um, but it also deals with just the general process so that they have a background with with which then they can ask better questions of their litigation counsel, make better decisions all along the way because they kind of understand, oh, okay, we're in the middle of this process. This is what's required. Uh, here are some of my options at a very high level. And then of course their counsel will be able to counsel them from there. So right. I think, I mean, I'm getting a lot of feedback right now that it's just a game changer. People are sending me emails, you know, I wish I'd had this five years ago. I think it fills a little niche where people didn't really have that background. So they muddled through and they got counseled on whatever was going on in the litigation, but they never really felt like they had a whole sense of what the whole process was. And so that's yeah. what it's meant to address. And, and for me, I mean, if I'm me with a lawyer, I don't want to be <laughs> as ignorant as I am about certain law <laughs> questions. I just want to go, okay, this will, this will like, now I can meet with them and not ask like really, really basic, stupid questions <laughs> that cost me a lot of money, but also I want to feel like I kind of know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Right. I want, exactly. I want the same thing. Be a little lingo. Yes. I want the same thing for like, for the, when I take my car in for the auto shop <laughs> and when I go to the doctor and, um, and as a parent. Um, although there's parenting books, but um, <laughs> parenting is hard um, and rewarding. I probably help you with the car part, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, now with, now with my kid. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, so I just want to dive into your book um, because you had so many interesting points. Um, the, okay, so one of them. Um, so what, what I'm most interested, of course, is is avoiding going to court. <laughs> and you even talk about oh. that that's, you know, not necessarily your, your first strategy. There's there's some people who say, you know, I'm just going to sue them if, if someone messes with me. But that's really expensive. And right. not very efficient. Right. No, it's not efficient. And, uh, you know, sometimes things do need to be escalated. There are some litigants that 
you know, there's really no getting around it. They just do want to fight. But uh, one of the themes of the book is this is a creative process and there are a lot of ways to either avoid litigation or exit litigation quickly. I have a couple of chapters where I specifically talk about those topics because they're important. And I think also the conventional wisdom is to sort of, uh, I think, is to, to wait and you've got a dispute brewing, but I think I can handle this myself and it's going to be cheaper if I do that. And one of the things I mentioned in the book is that's not always the right call. Sometimes if you know the legal merits of the dispute and you understand, hey, I actually don't have a great legal position to stand on or my opponent really doesn't and so I'm in a position of strength, you're going to then be able to use that in that conversation and then successfully avoid it rather than you just trying, not really knowing what the merits are, you, and I'm saying as an executive, let's say of a company, um, not really knowing what the legal merits are, they're well versed on what the merits are. They've talked with their right. lawyer, they're ready, ready to fight. And so you'd actually, it would actually be wiser to reach out to your litigation counsel and say, hey, this is what's going, uh, you know, what, what factors do I need to understand? How should I approach this? And, and uh, so, yeah, exit strategies and avoidance strategies are, are an important part of the book. And, A lot of things also, don't need to be litigated. <laughs> right. And you also talk about for most companies, I, mean, I hope most companies have their own lawyer, their own in-house counsel, but that, as you point out, they're not going to necessarily be experts on litigation. Right, right. They may have some background in litigation and they may not. They may be experts in something else like privacy law because it's a, a an organization that really needs specialists in that area. And so this is a book that can help those that, or, or maybe they, they did litigation but a really long time ago, you know, and they right. just want to feel more comfortable. It's something that they can use uh, to bone up, to, to feel more comfortable about the questions that they're asking their outside counsel about the litigation. And then also it's a tool for them to share with the C-suite, right? People who are making the legal decisions. Uh, very often the CFO is someone who is supervising the in-house counsel and asking them, well, why are the bills so so high or where what is this for? Right. And this will allow me, you know, maybe the CFO would benefit from understanding the process a little better. And so an house counsel might say, hey, you know, you might read this book. It's very helpful and will help you understand the process that we're going through. And, um, you know, we can have better conversation or however they pitch it. But I think it's a tool for them to get everybody on the same page about the basics. Yeah. And it's very readable. I intentionally made it for non-lawyers. So nobody should be intimidated by reading this book. Well, I remember when we were um, in business school and we learned about negotiation and the, the, the term BATNA, the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. And a lot of people don't realize that you need to start with the BATNA. You need to know, okay, if I don't get a deal, what's my next best option? Right. But understanding, you know, so, so you might have your ideas of this. It's like, okay, well then if I don't get it, then I'll go to court. Well, you also need to factor in, well, how winnable is my case and what are the, the um, responsibilities that I have? What are the, um, the, the costs, outcomes, you know, and the costs, mm -hmm. yeah. the costs, the disruption to business or whatever. And, you know, sometimes it's worth it. Sometimes you, you know, it's right. some kind of strategic conflict that you really need to 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 handle in litigation and the other side is just not willing to really negotiate even though you do you you do have a strong position on the merits so it's not a it's not a cure-all but um there should be some thought going into that process i guess and that's you know of course that's that's that reflects on the kind of work that you do which is to help clients understand the the conflict dynamics and uh, you know, what's really going on, what the interests are of the parties and to bring them, you know, bring them together rather than having them go down a dispute path. Absolutely. And, and one of the things work. I found is that a lot of times people, people are so, or a lot of people, not all people are so conflict averse and, you know, we don't want to court conflict unnecessarily, but sometimes we need to just have an honest conversation. And as you say in your book, you talk about the importance of communication and, and understanding 
um, being clear. You say being clear about one's objectives and promises and clearly communicating them to other parties, including in contracts. And, and I feel like, and I'd love, love your thoughts on this, but I, I see so many times when there's conflicts between individuals within a firm or even departments within a, a company mm -hmm. that they're, they're not thinking about, well, what does the other party want? And they're not understand. And if I feel like, you know, I'll, I'll talk to one of one person, then I'll talk to another and I'll be like, whoa, you guys are viewing this completely differently. You need to sit down and try to imagine what each other wants. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll, I'll do an exercise where I'll, I'll invite them to say to the other person, I think this is what you want. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they get it completely wrong. And sometimes they're right. And the other person says, oh, you do understand <laughs> what I want. And then mm -hmm. that, that diffuses the situation. But mm -hmm. how often have, have you been in a, in a, in a case where, where someone says, oh, we need to sue this person. And you think, have, have you taken other <laughs> steps? Uh, this doesn't call for a case? Well, yeah, I mean, it ever, there, there's sort of a continuum of escalation, right? And so if nothing has been filed yet and, uh, and the parties are having a dispute, uh, you know, very often I will send a cease and desist letter or something that right. is very heavy on the merits. I find, you know, if you just say, stop what you're doing nobody listens to you but if you explain this is where it's going south if you continue in your misconduct you will have these consequences to it right. a sensible party will likely back down and very often that happens sometimes it doesn't sometimes they're like loaded for bear and that's the end of it um and that's fine we can litigate too um you know and that's where our bread and butter is so it's totally fine but uh but yeah i mean even in within the course of a litigation, there are issues that come up, conflicts over, let's say, uh, we want you to produce these documents. Well, we don't want to produce these documents. We think they're protected by uh, confidentiality and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, negotiating that rather than going before a judge who has better things to do uh, is usually optimal. You know, if it's something that the parties really should be sensible and work out, then they should be sensible and work it out. And the judge is likely to take issue with both parties for even raising it to her attention. So, um, you know, and there are more serious issues that do need to, to go to that level. But um, usually I try really earnestly to talk to the opponent, let them understand why I believe they're wrong, understand better why they think what they do, and then unpack that. You know, and a lot of money can be saved because you don't wind up going to motion practice then if you could, if everybody stands down. Like, right. you know, I just don't really want to roll the dice with the judge or I don't want to burn up my credibility by making an issue out of this thing. Again, sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's a, it's a refrain that comes up over and over again in litigation. Yeah. For sure. So, so one of the fears that people have of calling in a litigator or a lawyer is they're scared that, oh, they're just going to like see dollar signs and, um, and I'm worried that if I come to them, then they're going to just ramp up the hours. But I also imagine that from your perspective, you're like, oh, if you just called me in, I could have told you just do this one thing and it all would have <laughs> been better. Like, like a cease and desist letter or, right. or, or know your rights or, or actually even I know you're my client, but you're actually doing this thing wrong. So you need to stop. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I mean, that really goes to the relationship you have with your counsel. Right. If, if your counsel is doing that, then, you know, they're not, they're not really classic counsel um, or they're, something's wrong. You're not communicating what you need. Um, you know, I mean, I'm very frank with my clients about this is what I think it's going to cost. Do you think that this is, uh, you know, is this worth it to you? You know, right. I don't want you to get down the road six months and be like, why did I do this? You know, and frankly, there's not that much at stake, you know, and then, so, you know, sometimes I, I get back, you know, but it's the principle of the matter. I do feel strongly that I need to do this or whatever. Um, but it's a matter of good communication and trust and the relationship. I want them to call me again. I don't want them to, to leave the litigation feel like, feeling like they 
didn't get their money's worth or that it was, uh, you know, that I didn't deliver service that was commensurate with my rate. And, uh, you know, I, people shouldn't just be afraid of that, I think, as a, in the normal course. I think that, you know, it's just like anybody else. You could take, you could be taken advantage of by anybody that you work with, but hopefully you've made a good choice about who it is. They have a good reputation. They care about, you know, we're professionals. We care about our clients and, and the object is not to, uh, you know, screw them. It's to uh, look after them and figure out a, a cost-effective way to deal with whatever the conflict is. And sometimes it's just going to be expensive because that's the nature of, usually it's the nature of the opponent yeah. And then you need to have a good conversation about what could likely happen. That's another reason why this book is super important is because, you know, in most business contexts, you just get a budget, right? You figure out what the budget is and then you just move forward. Well, here you've got the budget that is l largely dictated by an opponent that hates you and wants to destroy you, <laughs> right? Plus a judge that is overworked and, you know, can't, can't necessarily control the opponent and so there's there's a lot of you know a lot of dynamics going on there that really are outside your control and that's a conversation that needs to be had with your client to explain this is what the procedure is they can bring a motion you know this is about what motions cost our object will be to try to avoid motions and do blah 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 or this is our exit strategy we think you have a really strong legal position here so we're going to take a little discovery and then we're going to try to get it into mediation or whatever, you know, so, so there should be, I think the book facilitates that discussion right. because the client comes to that conversation or the in-house counsel who is also overworked in dealing with, you know, 70 cases that she's trying to supervise or whatever. Um, and, and they're equipped to, to talk through the options with outside counsel and come up with a better plan than they might have if they didn't have that prep. That Do makes you sense? find that, that most clients come to you too soon or too late? Or just right? <laughs> I would say, I would say just right. Oh, okay. You know, I have a level of trust with my clients where you know, they, they may, I have a couple right now I'm working with where like, Hey, we've got this thing brewing. I uh, don't think we really need your help. Uh, but you know, what do you think of it? And, uh, you know, I can come up with a few arguments that they can then use in negotiations, uh, which is perfect. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I came up with something yesterday where, um, it was a really simple argument, but they didn't see it. And she's, you know, and, and she said, that that's really helpful, you know, so it can be just a little tweak, but, um, but yeah, I think, it, I think it's about right. Most of our clients know uh, that, you know, engaging more earlier is, is better. They've hired trial lawyers, so they know, uh, I think, when it's time to uh, start doing some strategic thinking about the yeah. litigation, and it's a, a few dollars up front, but maybe a lot of dollars later, so best to to invest a little yeah and, and I liked how, how you laid out a, a lot of different alternatives to litigation um, can you say a little bit about arbitration and mediation and kind of the differences that you see between those sure so arbitration is uh, it's more or less like a court proceeding with arbitrators though making the decision and you can have a panel of arbitrators, you can have one arbitrator. Usually, uh, you know, arbitration is a product of a contract. Basically, you have agreed, and there are some exceptions, but you've basically agreed to arbitrate your claims rather than pursue them in court. And uh, it's meant to be a more streamlined process, maybe a little less discovery, or there will be more controls on discovery, but that can happen in court too. Right. Um, you can also have. Uh, a very uh, good, well-prepared arbitrator that's really into your case, or you can have one that's, uh, you know, really maybe not as uh, not as um, effective as as you would hope uh, in bringing the case to resolution. I mean, they're they're just humans like the rest of us, um, but but it's it's intended to uh, 
uh, have a more streamlined, faster process because it's not going through the court system. Right. And the arbitrator will, arbitrator or arbitrators will come up with an award that then can be turned into a judgment. And what about uh, mediation? Oh, oh yeah. Yep, okay, so mediation is totally different. Yeah, a mediation is more what you were describing. Um, sort of true mediation is about a facilitator who does not come up with a decision like an arbitrator or arbitration arbitration panel, but instead works with the parties to help them understand what their real interests are in pursuing the dispute. So the parties have their positions, but underneath that is I want to be heard. I want uh, compensation okay. for X, Y, and Z. There are all kinds of things, or there may be, um, it would be really great if uh, we didn't have to pay for this kind of exposure that this company can provide us, you know. And so the arbitrator, I mean, sorry, the mediator will ask questions of each of the parties and uh, usually privately, it's kind of like shuttle diplomacy, and yeah. find out what, unpack those interests. What are you really, what's, what upset you about this or whatever? And they, they get that and then, then they can use that to package together some kind of compromise that then the parties will either reject or they'll accept. Yeah. And it's just a, it's a mediated resolution. Mediation doesn't have to be that structured, but that's kind of how they taught us at, at Stanford. And it made a lot of sense, you know, talking about empathy and really understanding what the other party, it goes to your point exactly. What, what's in the other person's head about this? It may be very different than what you thought they were thinking. Yeah. You know, um, but mediators can also just be kind of a shuttle diplomacy, talking through the issues with the parties. Very often you brief the issues for the mediator so that particularly if the mediator is a former judge, you can tell them what the merits are. This is what the bad guys are contending. This is why it's wrong. These are the legal principles that will govern this dispute. If you can't make peace between us, then we're going to have to go to litigation. So, and then the mediator knows when they have their session with the, with the bad guys to say, Hey, they have a really strong legal position. Right. And you know, these are some of the things that are going to be brought up in litigation. Do you really want that to happen? And so, it can also be just a more sort of informal way of getting the parties to talk. Absolutely. And, and I found that w when I'm helping with clients, you know, just being able to speak with them each separately, confidentially, mm -hmm. not sharing it, their information, it allows them to vent like crazy. And then after they vent, then I can reflect back. And I said, okay, th these are the different issues that I've heard. And sometimes when you're like just really angry, you can't see all the different issues that it's all jumbled together. Right. And sometimes what people really want is they want their adversary in this battle to, to have someone that they can talk to because they're like, if you would just, I don't need it, but someone else needs it. <laughs> And then if they would, then they'd be like, okay, we can solve this. We can, mm -hmm. we can find a solution. But, but not when people are just so angry at each other that they can't even see straight. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's good, good to have an intermediary or somebody who can put that aside. Hear it? Put it aside. And sometimes just and, knowing, okay, we better solve this. Otherwise... Uh, the other council has Diane Caferata. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if we can come to an agreement. <laughs> well, again, congratulations on your book. This is just great. Um, I actually have some people in mind who I, I can give this to or, or have them buy their own copy for $20. Um, it's, it is a game changer. It, it really helps understand, you understand the important issues that you need to know before you go out and spend a lot of money. Absolutely. And by the way, I yeah. have, <clears throat> excuse me, I am offering bulk discounts because I contemplated that people might want to give these out as gifts and I want to make it, you know, much more affordable to do that. So uh, just let me know how many you want and, you know, we can work out a, a deal so that you, you're not having to, uh, you know, expend the $19.99 for, for each one. Well, thank you. And currently, it's actually That's on right. Amazon for $14.99. So ah, there's a deal right there. Yeah. 
Great. Well, thank oh, you. The other thing that I wanted to mention real yeah. quick is I think for foreign counsel and foreign executives, I'm hearing a lot of feedback about the book uh, from them that this is something that they've really wanted because their legal systems are very different. And then they're right. faced with the possibility of U.S. litigation. And this is just a short and sweet way to kind of, you know, have an overview. And so, um, so anybody that's out there that's in a foreign company, you know, consider this book. I think it'll really help you. Excellent. Diane, thank you so much. And, thank you, Jason. Um, this is so fun. And, and, and I know our, our reunion was rescheduled, so hopefully I'll see you next August. <laughs> hopefully. Okay. Cheers. Okay. <laughs>